All right, finally got this thing woke up. Gave her a little bit of a bath, blow off some of that 25 year old dust. And let's take her for a little spin, see what she does. Now, if she don't, now if she starts. No, she ain't out of gas. Come on, baby. Let's go. 70 Cornet 500, man. Hasn't ran in years. That's my favorite part about doing these cars. And opening up this wing window. You're good, man. <laughs> I said you're good. I appreciate it. Yeah, man, I'm just right here. I just want to get in front of my house. Well, that was awesome. When you wash a car and you got hood scoops or a Mopar hood that is actually real deal and water starts getting right down on your air cleaner and down in your motor, it probably ain't gonna start. Crazy. We are back. We are back to the 70 Cornet, the car that's been fighting me for, I don't know, over a month now and uh, once I think I got her dialed in you know then I have an issue with something and now I think we have a timing chain problem the reason why I say that is because I spun the crank bolt and the rotor seems to take a little bit of time before it starts turning and plus I got a backfire out of this carburetor that I cannot figure out so I'm to the point where it's either got to be a timing chain or I got a flat cam who knows anyway Wish me luck. 
let's start cracking into this thing. All right, we're getting close. We're, what I wanted to do real quick is just spin this crank bolt one more time so you guys see how bad it take, how long it takes to get that rotor even to start turning. That's what makes me think it's the timing chain. If it ain't, it's a cam. And I think that's where we're gonna stop because this motor is gonna have to come out, get all redone, yada, yada. I don't know if Larry wants to do a cam. <clears throat> you start, when you do a cam, then you start wondering like, are the bearings going bad? You know, how much, how much wear and tear on the valves already, the bear, the lower bearings. So when it comes to that, it's almost like, since we don't know nothing about this engine, and it's been in this car for who knows how long, the car's been sitting for over 20 years, it's like, man, maybe it's time to just do a complete overhaul, quit messing around, putting Band-Aids on this thing. So, let's do the crank bolt. Let's look at that rotor one more time. All right, let's pull this rotor so you can see it the best we can here. Let's stick that up there, that'll be fine. Rotor's starting to turn. Let's go the other way now. Cranking, 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 cranking. Now it turns. So that's what makes me think it's the timing chain. So I literally get, let's see, turning, turning right about there, and then the rotor starts spinning. So I'm hoping that's what it is. I'm pretty sure. I mean, the only thing we got left is the cam. It's got a flat spot in the cam. All the valves are opening and closing. I changed, um, then I started maybe thinking it was the car, but this is a really good holly, and I put a dominator on here just to swap it out and see, and the dominator's popping as well. So, I don't think it's the carb. I'm really starting to keep going to the uh, timing chain. So, let's continue. Got it. Of course, that little nipple right there for the water pump to go to the heater core was right in front of a bolt. I forgot about that. All right, we gotta get the two on the bottom of the pan that I totally forgot about, which I think, if I remember right, that's how you get the cover off, I think. Bam, there she is. All right, let's look at this timing chain. I think I got a little bit of slop in the timing chain. I don't know, you guys tell me. <laughs> I think that's our culprit. See, plastic gears, Mopar use these old plastic gears and they just get worn out, so. We're gonna stick a nice one in there. I think that was our culprit and uh, We'll see how she does. We got half of it out. Not too painful. You, you guys seen the slop in it. This is her. She's got a busted plastic tooth right here. She's cracked all around. So I'm pretty sure that is the culprit. Anyway, timing chain. We're gonna get the bottom piece out. We'll slide on the new one. We'll continue. Let's try this again. <laughs> that was awesome. What is going on, Mr. Freaking Cornet? I was. Should be fine. Poor Mr. Cornet. She's not wanting to play right now.
know what that noise is. Can't figure out if that's the power steering club just shooting crabs because it's leaking like crazy or what. Well, we're back to the 1970 Dodge Coronet 500. And I'll tell you what, guys, I hate to say this, but this car kicked my, you know what. The 383, we can never get it to run right. It keeps popping out of that carburetor. It blew the valley pan up, like bowed it up. I think there's something wrong with it. I don't know if it's got like a piston skirt maybe cracked. It's getting, uh, the rings are bad in it or something. But it's got a lot of blow by one um, and two she's tired which we knew that when we fired her up for the first time it's not a numbers matching motor transmission to this car so i don't feel the too bad getting it up out of here but at the same time i'm this is a, probably one of the few cars that i'm like i just can never have any fun with it Every time I feel like I got it fixed, I take it up the road, bam, backfired and starting to fire in the road. <clears throat> Pop, backfire, got to fire my carburetor. So it's just to that point. It sucks because I wanted to do a lot more with this car. Now, I'm not saying that we're completely done with this bad boy because I got something up my sleeve for it. But now we're to the point where this motor's got to come out. She just, she just needs to be gone through and... Um, She's seen better days. guys so we got the engine pulled out of 70 cornet i did not want to have to do that i didn't want to do a five-part series on this car i wanted to do like a two-part burning tires having a great time and unfortunately backfire literally the car and the engine anyway i told you i had something up my sleeve for this car and uh let's go see what that is all right so we know that my buddy that's my buddy larry's car i say larry in my videos just so you guys know that's his car it's not my car he bought that car about two or three years ago it's been sitting in his garage you see that in part one of this series and then um 
I finally went over there and grabbed the car and see if we could do our, you know, get a run and drive and do all that fun stuff and uh, backfire. So anyway, here's what we got. Here's what I got up my sleeve. So, this is the old 383, nothing but problems. Freaking valley pan bowed up from backfiring so much. Cars, the, the engine, not the car, the cars are good. The engine is just tired. It's not a numbers car, or why do I keep saying car? It's not a numbers engine. So you guys don't think like, oh, he's taking a numbers engine and, you know, messing that car up. No, it's not a numbers. It's probably a Winnebago 383. I don't know. I don't know. The Winnebago's even come with 383s. Who knows? But it's not to the car. So I don't feel bad about this. Here's what's gonna go in the car. So, we have a big bad 440, already done. Uh, board 30, comp cam, comp lifters, valve springs. This engine was done by a local um, gentleman not too far from here. My buddy Larry ended up finding it. The gentleman ended up building the motor for a customer the customer never came and got the engine lo and behold engine was built never picked up and paid for so my buddy larry found it he uh went up and grabbed it and this is what we're doing we pulled the pan off the bottom everything aarp bolts got flat top pistons in it everything's brand new and um seven quart oil pan balanced what else they say it's got uh i don't even remember it's supposed to have a gnarly cam in it molly rings yada yada you know the list we got some nasty ceramic coated headers for it uh, my buddy dennis and i just built this 727 a couple weeks ago <clears throat> we're gonna put all that behind it that is gonna be going in that 70 cornet because we are going to rip tires whether she likes it or not but anyway part four this is part four is this part three this might be part three part four you'll see us dropping that engine in give me a little bit of time we got a few things going on around here and uh, but stay up with that car because it's gonna it's gonna be a bad boy no doubt it's a good car but anyway my name is brad poor boy's garage let them rip, not rot. Keep on saving them. Don't send them to the crusher. We hate that. And on to different things this week or next week. And we are out. It's a blast.